death. What a nasty word. I don't like that word. I don't like thinking about dying. But we must remember that there is a blessing in dying. What an oxymoron that is. And in dying, we live. Think about that. Why don't you? This is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love Online since nine, since 2018. Six years already. Wow. Time flies. Okay. You know, a lot of times, a, a lot of us hate that word death. We hate to think of dying. We hate to think of what it takes to let go of everything that means everything to us as we go through the dying process. So I'm going to share a few things with you because in dying we live. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. All right. 1 John chapter 2 and I'm starting at verse 13. No, I'm starting at verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth for ever. All right, here's a little warning. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time, or the end times, the last days. What God is trying to show us is there's a dying process. And what came to my mind when I this whole thought came to me was what I read when my husband was dying. Hospice, if you go on Google and you Google hospice, it is a perfect allegory for how we are to let go of the world. When you read what a person, the stages of death, what a person goes through when they are getting ready to cross over. And aren't we getting ready to cross over? Think about that. Aren't we getting ready to cross over every day of our lives? So when you think about that, I'm going to share some of the details I read when my husband was dying here at the house. His last 33 days. And I prepared myself so I would know what to, what not to do, what was dangerous, what was safe, you know, what was best for him, the whole nine yards. One of the things they say is when a person is letting go of this world, getting ready to cross over, after a while, they're going to need a lot of silence or very soft, serene music. Why? Because the regular noises of this world can jar them, can make crossing over a very difficult task. What ends up happening is I've heard stories from the hospice nurse. I hope you're getting this. I'm painting a picture. So please don't leave right now. I want you to hear this. What the hospice nurse told me when Milton was sleeping was there are times when she went to some homes and the person is laying there trying to cross over and the kids are ripping and running and running in and out of their house and in and out of their room. And the, the family is all there trying to be a source of comfort, but they're really a source of agony because they don't understand that they're creating a very chaotic atmosphere for this person who really needs to have a very peaceful, harmonious atmosphere. You got fights breaking off here and arguments over there and people standing over the patient's bed, arguing back and forth and blaming each other for stuff. And this person has to deal with all that while they're trying to let go. What I read was, you make sure the music is quiet. 
there comes a point where they don't want to have the television on. They don't want to hear the chatter. They don't want to hear the normal noises. They don't want the news. They don't want the blah, 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 blah that comes on in the movies. They don't want any of it. They want peace. So then the next thing is, if they are in the Lord, hopefully you are, you also want peaceful music that's uplifting, not a bunch of cussing and, and blasting and blaspheming and heifers over here and holes over there and bees over there and what you're going to do with them and all that. No, they need peace and quiet. So the music should be very peaceful very worship oriented, very, very uh, serene, angelic almost. Then they get to the point where they, I remember Milton got to the point, he didn't even want the music. He wanted quietness. And he would call me over and we'd hold and we'd hug. But you know, there came a point where he didn't even want to be touched. He really needed to be left alone. Wasn't anything personal. That's part of the stages. He was letting go of me as well. You understand that? Two days later, he, was, he, he had slipped into a coma and he was gone. So the bottom line is he, he went very peacefully, very peacefully, because the atmosphere was conducive for him to do so. This is the problem with us. Okay, now that I've dealt with that, this is the problem with us. We call ourselves living for Christ and dying to the world. We're dying to ourselves. Um, no, let me see how good. Oh, yeah, the song. Goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Well, yeah, you think you made up your mind that everything is God from now on. Everything, worship music, Christian TV, everything is, is, is uh, <laughs> God's way. But in the middle of the night, you're watching movies you shouldn't watch. Some of you are watching porn you shouldn't watch. Some of you are on the on Facebook 24-7, you can't live your life for answering and, and messaging on Facebook. You're caught up in, in, uh, in gossip about this uh, celebrity and that celebrity. You're on, the, on YouTube lamb blasting your fellow brothers and sisters who may have stepped sideways and got lost in the shuffle. And they're, instead of you praying, Instead of you asking for prayer, you're up there gossiping and backbiting. In the name of the Lord. And you think you're dying to yourself. You think you're dying to the world. Well, take necessarily so, baby. You, there is no way. Now, some of you have an issue with peace. You're not going to get peace when you're hanging around argumentative people, when you allow them to stay in your life. <clears throat> you're not going to enter into God's rest when you're steadily at odds with this one, at odds with that one. You won't ask forgiveness. You won't give forgiveness. You won't show mercy. You won't show compassion. Because in your book, Baby Cakes, they don't deserve it. How dare they think I'm going to do something for them? But your Lord and Savior, air quote, says, do good to your enemies. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah, you forgot that part. Or maybe you didn't get that memo. Mm -hmm. He also says to be kind to those who despitefully use you. Ooh, ooh, wait, wait, back, back that track up. I, I know Jesus didn't say that. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yeah. In essence, that's what he says. Mm -hmm. Because in doing good to your enemy, 
It's like pouring hot coals of fire on their head. That's what the Bible says. I, I read it with my own two eyes. Oh, yes, it did. So you think you're dying to the world. You really think that. But the conversations you're having <laughs> are so worldly and you don't even realize it. That's why it's difficult for you to cross over on the other side. Now, I'm not talking about dying physically. I'm talking about crossing over from the ways of the world to God's ways. It's difficult. It's a struggle. Why is it a struggle? Because when the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, you still love the world. You won't admit it, but yeah. Yeah, you still love the world. At night, you might go out with some of your girlfriends when your church members or your work, you, you know, your co-workers don't know it. But you're out there at some club watching men strip. Or some of you men are going to the strip joint or to the X-rated movies in the middle of the night, spending your, your hard-earned money that's meant for your family to enjoy and benefit from. And you're up there working your body parts while they're grunting and, and acting on the screen. Love not the world? Why do you love it so much? Why is it so easy for you when you get offended to leave the church? Why is it so easy for you when you get offended to not be bothered with any of your brothers and sisters in Christ? Why is that so easy for you? Hmm? Why do you feel so comfortable not being around any Christians at all? How is that normal? See, when you have Christ in you, you want to be around like spirits. You want to be with the other knuckleheads that have Christ in you. You love them. You want to be around them. You enjoy them. Why is it so easy for you to walk away? You tell God, talk to the hand, baby. I'm done with you. Why? Because he didn't give you the car you wanted when you wanted it? Why? Because things didn't work out for you the way you thought they should? Because in this country, with all this privilege, we tend to have feelings of entitlement. Well, I deserve it after all. <laughs> yeah. No. Not necessarily so, but you think you do. See, what I'm trying to say real quick, I'm trying not to take a lot of time because it's going to be a short message and a short service. A lot of you really, really think you have died to yourself. Some of you are controlling Oh my goodness, it's my way or the highway. Some of you cop a fat attitude. If nobody wants to do what you want to do, you, you're just ready to cancel the whole trip because they don't want to go where you want to go. They don't want to do what you want to do. Hello. And you're sour. You're hard to be around. You're, you're an adult walking around with your bottom lip poked out, pouting with your arms folded in the spirit. Nobody sees it or they might see it and, and get a whiff of your bad attitude. And they're wondering, what's up with you? You, you? you know, are you going through PMS? You know, what's going on? Did you get fired? You know, your wife didn't handle you the, the, the night before. What's up? But you're mad because they didn't do things that you wanted to do. Or you're mad because somebody else got something that you thought you deserved. See, when you think that you have let go of the world, there, there's an old expression. Listen, listen. I don't know if you've heard this before. You can take the man out of the joint. I just say out of the joint. But you can't necessarily take the joint out of the man. If a lifesaver has to go and rescue somebody, first thing they have to do is get them out of the water. That's what God does. He gets us out of the world. 
Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. But the whole process of getting the world out of us. Now that right there. And we think because we're not out there hanging out at the nightclub, getting high, drinking ourselves to oblivion, smoking, snorting, toting, shooting. We're not doing any of that. We're not laying. We're not playing. We're not out there doing our thing. No, 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 no. We're nice upstanding citizens working, minding our own business. <clears throat> yeah, sure. But what is in your heart? What are you cherishing? What is God saying? Give that to me. And you're saying, no, no, <laughs> no, I got a right to this. What is it? Is it bitterness? Is it wrath? Your bad temper? Is it your tendency or your propensity to slap your wife or your kids upside the wall, kick them and punch them? Hmm? Or for some of you women, oh, 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 Whew. that unholy silence you give your husbands, that unholy look you give your kids that make them feel like they should never have been born, and you would have been so much happier. Those cutting words that come out of your mouth. And you say you don't love the world. You love the Lord. You're dying to yourself. No, you sound very much alive to me. If you're still doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. Manipulating. Playing all kind of mind games. To have control. Narcissism. Mm. Jezebel, I mean, you going up, <laughs> you going for the gusto. But in your mind, you think you are not only saved, but you have let go of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to share this with you. For any of you to be able to walk away from God after walking with him and seeing his miracles happen in your life, you never knew him. I'm going to tell you that right now. No way can you walk away from God if you really knew him. If you really experienced him, if you know his supernatural galactic love, there's like nothing on this planet. Nothing. Doesn't feel at all like this down here. I don't care how much love you have in your family, baby. It doesn't hold a candle to God's love. If you've never experienced God, then yeah, it's easy. It's easy to walk away. I grant you that. But if you know God in the fellowship of his resurrection and a fellowship of his suffering, and you've had him all intertwined in your life, in your business, in your affairs, and all kind of, 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 of connections you got with him, there's no way you could leave somebody. There's no way you could leave that kind of beauty. There's no way. So for you, to love not the world, you have the way to love not the world is to love God. The way to love not the world, neither the things in it, is to fall so in love with God that nothing else matters in comparison. <clears throat> some of you, some of you are having a difficult time because. You may not be out there loving the world's ways, but there are people that are in and of the world and you can't let them go. And they're manipulating you and seducing you and controlling you. And they're driving you up the wall, but you don't understand it's a demonic attachment. And they have got a hold on you and you don't understand why you won't let go. Knowing they're toxic, knowing they're volatile, knowing they're bad news, knowing they're using you and spending every dime you get in your pocket. But you won't let them go. Why? 
Don't put that Christian spin on it. Well, I'm here to minister to them. No, no, no. Don't even try it, baby. No. Jesus himself said, don't cast your pearls before swine. Jesus himself said, don't give that which is holy unto the dogs. When you give and give and give and put out and put out and put out, and this person, it's never enough. There, there's always something that more they need. There's always more you need to do. There's, there's, there's some way you're always falling short. How come you can't? Why, why, why? And you're steadily trying to prove what a good Christian, you better walk away. You better leave that alone. Because what you're doing is you're playing footsies with the world. That person ain't of God. Sorry, baby cakes. But Jesus said, you know them by the fruit they bear. That ain't God's fruit. It ain't. All right. So getting back to dying to self. One of the ways you die to yourself is you stop leaning to your own understanding. But in all your ways, you begin to acknowledge him so he can direct your path, him meaning God. Okay. You commit your life to Jesus Christ. Ask him to be your Lord and Savior, not just your Savior. You don't just need forgiveness, baby. You need somebody to hold your hand to get you through this muck and mire down here. And you need to be filled with his Holy Spirit. You should ask daily for a fresh and filling. Because just like a car, gas runs out, baby. And that car is not going to run without gasoline in it. You cannot walk for the Lord without the Holy Spirit in you. So you have to ask on a daily basis for God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> you also must get into his word. His word is alive. God's word. That, that's why the Bible calls Jesus the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Uh-huh. So that shows you right there that talking about Jesus, when it goes further down, he dwelt among us, he became flesh. Uh-huh. All of that. That shows you who that is. It's self-explanatory. John chapter one, if you got any doubts, read it. Now, I don't do this often, but I, so I hope you don't get offended. But a lot of you are blessed by the different channels that some of us do here on YouTube. And we might be some little small time ministry. Just trying to do our part. And some of you will go out of your way to bless these big ministries that have thousands of people or hundreds of people giving to them. And then you benefit from the ministry that we do, but you don't think to give us any kind of blessing? And I just want to ask you to please consider the small time YouTube channels. We put our hearts into what we do as well. And we don't have 50, 100, 10,000 people giving to us. But you're giving to the ones who do, who already have that. Please consider donating and supporting the ones that have been faithful for 5, 10, 15 years. My channel has been up with, I've got about 2,200 videos that I've done over the last 10 years. I've got maybe two or three uh, people who donate over, over all this time. But some of you will give to these churches and these ministries that have mega, I mean, you, they got people from all over the place giving and they're living fat, they're living great. And we're put, putting along. Please consider thinking about the small ones as well. And this is, I'm not just talking about me. There are other people that do even more than I do in outreach. This is your little uh, station break. Please consider the small ministries while you're so busy giving to the big ones. Now, so you have to read the word. You have to pray. 
You don't only run your mouth, blah, 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 and I want this, and I want that, and I want that, and I want that. No, you also must ask God questions, questions like this. Lord, why do I do that? Would you show me? Would you deliver me from that? Lord, why does that kind of stuff upset me so much? Would you show me? Would you cleanse me from all unrighteousness? Would you purify my spirit? See, you have to constantly ask God to bathe you. And then you must take the initiative and bathe your spirit in the word of God. And I'm going to stop there because we're trying to end early. But I want to share with you, just make sure that you not only die to yourself, but you learn to live for Christ. You can't do that flying solo. Learn what it means to let go of the world. Learn what it means. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, and that's your closing scripture, and I'll be done. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So holiness is not always going to be comfortable, y'all. Let me tell you, sometimes you obey to the point of tears. I don't want to do it like that, Lord. Why? Why? But you do it anyway. Mm -hmm. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. That means changed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? Reading the word, prayer, being filled with the Holy Spirit, being around God's people. God bless you.